All right, so I received a uh, question from 8020 on the Gas Companion Discord earlier on, asking how to use enhanced input um, with gas effectively. And uh, I already did this video, but I, I screwed up my resolution, so I have to do it again. So we'll see how this goes. Um, basically, I'm going to start with the basics. Uh, you're going to want to go through your plugins. And enable enhanced input. Uh, I also really recommend going and downloading the gas attach editor if you're using gas uh, at all, because this thing is an amazing uh, plugin and it's free. So there's no reason not to use it. It's great for debugging, and that's what I'll go over here in a bit. Um, but yeah, right off the start, you're going to want to create new enhanced input things. After you've created your enhanced input, input you create or input actions. Input actions are uh, basically anything, and uh, aim and crouch are both here, so I'm going to open aim first. You can see there's nothing really there. Open crouch, nothing's really selected there. They're just ba they're just the base one, because the input mapping is actually what controls everything, so this is my input mapping for my default controls. Um, and the great thing about uh, enhanced input, and I'll kind of touch on this a little bit in a second, is that when you use these uh, input mappings and default controls, you can set up different input mappings and things to set up your input mappings and stuff like that. And then that's how you can set up different control schemes for, for your players very easily. Um, so aim is going to go into here and it uses my right mouse button and it's down. And that's different from crouch because crouch is pressed. So at least for mine, uh, a lot of people would have crouch as they're down, uh, which I'll explain basically in a second. So what happens is inside of uh, enhanced input, um, you get a whole bunch of different outputs for your enhanced input. And you're going to have to kind of mess around with it and print a lot of strings as per usual uh, to figure this stuff out. But let me just grab crouch. Gotcha, let's go to crouch. Let's move this aside because this is what we're going to be talking about. That's one. Aims up here. Just move this over there. And my begin play. So I can remove this from because I'm not using this. Okay, so um, back to the input mapping. There is down and pressed. Now on aim, I have it started and completed, and that's because when you press, uh, you're down, it starts it, and then when you let go, it completes it, similar to pressed and released from normal input. So you could use pressed and released, but when you get using enhanced input, you kind of just use it for everything. Um, in order to get it working, you enable the plugin on begin play, just because I haven't moved this to my player controller yet. You use the enhanced input local player subsystem, and then right here is where you uh, do your input mapping. So this is where you can load different input mappings if you wanted and different things like that using however whatever system you want personally i would use a variable map to select input mapping based on whatever the player chooses or something um or an array uh but yeah in in the aim there's on started it's going to cancel my sprint through in a send gameplay event to actor and it will also untarget so i have a hard lock like dark souls and uh you don't want either of those things when you use aim because it makes it cheesy if you can just be hard locked at them, click aim, and you auto aim at them. I mean, if that's what you want, cool, but that's not what I wanted. And I also didn't want to be able to aim while I was sprinting. I think that's ridiculous. Uh, so on complete, it just sends the same gameplay event, basically, but a different tag to aim ability or ability aim cancel. And uh, on started, it starts the ability. So down acts like a tick. Uh, it acts like pressed, and it will trigger the ability every frame because GAs otherwise only last for a single or three frames, basically, about um because they're instantiated so this will just trigger that ability over and over and over and over and over again um whereas this method if i pr press triggered as you remember i have pressed here instead triggered uh and completed will occur basically at the same time so and this i just pressed uh press triggered and then it checks to see if you have crouch if you have crouch or if you have the crouch tag it will uncrouch down here and if you don't then it will cancel sprint because i don't want to run in sprint or uh, crouch and sprint personally again, and then uh, activate my crouch ability. So I'm not going to go over aim today because everyone kind of has a different aim ability, but I will show its functionality. 
Um, but inside of Crouch, open up my GA for Crouch. So I have just a basic tag set up for now. Uh, the ability.crouch uh, activates whenever you, this, this ability has these tags, and then whenever you activate it, you have these tags, and it blocks the ability tag uh, jump. So I don't want to jump while I'm crouching. So it commits the ability, and it makes sure that your tag checks are covered and that you have your costs or whatever you would need. Um, I'm using activate ability on this. Sometimes I used to use interfaces, but I learned that uh, interfaces don't properly end abilities, and that's they're not going to remove the tags because they don't quite understand that the ability is running, I guess. Um, but yeah, cast to a generic character. Normally, I am super against casting, so if you were to do uh, cast to uh, player character, right, this one. So this is my player character cast, uh, and or it is a player character cast, and it's to a BP node. And the reason why you never want to do a BP cast if you can possibly avoid it is because they're very large. They increase your character's size map, so your memory goes up like a net every time you use a cast. And the reason why mine's only 94 megabytes is because I'm not getting anything downstream. So none of my none of my things ever use casts because um, it just adds to your size map dramatically for your ability, the ability that's casting from it, and I, 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 it just gets a nightmare. So best to use C++ character casts when you can, if you have to use them, which in this instance I do. So I get the avatar actor from avatar info, goes into the character. Um, from there, I get my character movement. And another way of getting this character movement, if you didn't want to cast to a character, and I try to explain this effective communication all the time, is you can get component by class. And when you get component by class from your avatar uh, info, you can get pretty much any component. You tr you will crash the engine if it doesn't pass its validity check, but if if you know it has it, it's good to go. So um, an instance of this would be the character movement component, which you can get from every character. Every character is going to have a character movement component because that's part of being a character. Um, and then from there, you can uh, is falling or whatever you want, and then you can use it like this. So this is going to avoid casting entirely. Much better way of communication if you can. Um, and then sometimes it's also really nice because you can just use it for things like I use targeting component from the guy who makes gas companion. And if I wanted to see if it's locked, I can just do it like this. So that's a, a nice feature of like getting component by class rather than using casting is it costs less memory. Um, so yeah, get, so it goes from there. Uh, it does just make sure you're not falling. If you're not falling, you can crouch. Um, and then crouch is a, a function that's called from the character C++ character class. And it has some mm, hidden things I want to say. Like there's just some, some weird stuff that crouch does as a function um, that you may or may not want to use. So for instance, I thought that crouch would be very similar in terms of movement to slide. It turns out it's not. I do not recommend doing that. So um, slide is kind of a completely different thing. If you want the camera movement that comes along with crouch, you're going to just have to program that into your slide properly because it just doesn't do it well with crouch. Anyway, it uh, goes from there. I am getting an animation master because I am personally using AGR. Uh, AGR Pro is an amazing plugin. Highly recommend it. Um, you can do a lot of, lot of animation things like a sort of like ALS or like uh, move it or something like that. But because you're building it yourself, you generally have a better understanding of what's going on under the hood. And I absolutely love this. It does more than just animation. There's all sorts of other parts to it. I highly recommend you look it up. It's called AGR Pro. Um, and I'll do other tutorials on that stuff in the future as well. Um, but once it goes past all that, so it activates Crouch, it does Wait Gameplay Event. So this is technically where the code is like sitting until it gets, like the tag is not removed as of right here. And I'll show that in a second. And then once it gets the wait gameplay event, so once I press pressed again, uh, and on my character, it checks to see if I have the tag. At this point, I would have the tag crouch. Then it would remove the tag crouch through that gameplay event. So it sends the gameplay event to myself. And then when it receives that event on this, this actor, it uncrouches and does uncrouch, uh, removes the tag from Anim Master, and then finally ends the ability. And this is the crucial part because Otherwise, there's no way to do this kind of thing without it not functioning right. Um, you have to have some sort of gameplay event or something like that in this instance anyway to make sure your tag is removed. And this is where the debugger comes super in handy is I didn't realize a lot of this stuff was even happening 
Uh, I would just have sort of tag conflicts going on where certain things wouldn't work after I was using other things and I couldn't figure out quite what was going on and I realized it was tags. So I went and um, you activate your, where is it here, developer tools, debug ability viewer. And then sometimes these other windows disappear so you have to just right click and it brings them both up. I'll make this half my screen. I will click play. Let's update, refresh, view. All right, so this is my character, all the abilities he has right now. And uh, as I walk around, I'll hit crouch and you can see that it active, makes crouch active and makes it so my tag is blocked with jump. Um, works good. There's no problems if I jump and crouch, it doesn't crouch. Um, yeah, any, any of those kind of redundancies are fixed. And then if I was to do uh, aim, which I was talking about earlier, it prevents me, it says can't activate sprint and target actor is blocked. So my hard target is blocked, so I can't use that ability. Um, I can't sprint while I'm like this. And uh, aim is active. And if I let go of press, like I said, down activates the ability. Uh, releasing it completes the ability, and then it clears those tags. Um, so if I'm running too, I can be sprinting, and then as soon as I click aim, it immediately cancels sprint because of that event remove actor tag that I was talking about or the event, which is right in here. Um, so yeah, if I'm running, I'm sprinting, and then I click aim, it's like, no, you're not sprinting. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a rundown of how this all works. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, they can feel free to message me, uh, and I'll make another video or something like that. Yeah, I hope this helps everyone.